Lesson 3.08, Triangle Similarity Part 2. Please don't forget to add your course and section number with all communication to me. Your course number would be 202B. Your section number would be 1, 2, 3, or 4. This information can be found in the upper right hand corner of your geometry LMS. The objectives of this lesson is to use the side-side-side uh, similarity theorem, the side-angle-side similarity theorem, both to determine if two triangles are similar, define similar polygons, determine and use scale factors, write and solve proportions to find missing measures and similar polygons. Proving triangle congruence. Remember the side-side-side postulate says if the sides of one triangle are congruent to the sides of another triangle, then the two triangles are congruent. The side angle side postulate says if two sides and the included angle in one triangle are congruent to two sides and the included angle in another triangle, then the two triangles are congruent. Okay, what is the theorem that allows us to state that triangle DEF is similar to triangle GHJ? So we look here and we see that tri uh, angle D, oh goodness, I just popped right out of that, that angle D has the same measure as angle G. Then they're telling us that they're proportional. Okay, they're telling me that these two angles, whoops, let me get my pen, I thought I already had it on, that these two angles right here are congruent. These, uh, this proportion down here tells me that DE is proportional to GH, and it's also telling me that DF is proportional to GJ. So if you look, I have a side, an angle, and a side. So that is side, angle, side, postulate. Now then, I didn't say much to you about that included angle earlier because I knew it was a visual thing that we needed to see, but if I've got an angle that's in between two sides, like angle D and angle G, that means that it's included. It's included between those two sides. So that helped me decide to decide on the side angle side postulate. Okay, let's go to this next one. All right, this one, oh goodness, look here. I've got both of these guys are 90 degrees. So those angles are congruent. Let me see, does, let's, let's do some math here. Let's say 180 minus 26 minus 90, ooh yeah, I'm liking that. That equals 64. So that means this angle right over here is 26. So, since I have this angle and this angle that are um, congruent, I've got this angle, this angle, this one, and this one, what is that going to tell me? Well, I've never been told that I can use angle, 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 all right, but I can because we don't use all three A's. Since I have two angles, because I have at least two, okay, that third one's always going to be, and then I got these, this 26, okay, that's going to be the angle, angle, similarity postulate. You don't have to write all three A's. Two will be sufficient because by default that third angle is going to be congruent. Alright. Oh look here. I didn't realize I went through and wrote everything out. Measure angle H is 180 and I did all this in my calculator while I was talking to you. Measure angle K, yay! 
but at least y'all get to see how it's working out. And so H is equal to L, G is equal to K, so that gives me the angle-angle similarity postulate. All right, you got to see it in messy handwriting and neat typing. All right, this one says, for each problem, determine which postulate or theorem proves that the two angles are similar. And look at me, already popping the answer up here, but let's see how it works. Um, for each problem, do the following. Determine which postulate or theorem. Okay, oh, I see what I did. Here's what the problem looks like in the problem set. What I did down here and it might be helpful for you, is I took the triangles apart. Anytime you have one inside another, it makes it easier for you to do your work if you take them apart. Now, this obviously is three millimeters here. Okay, so that's going to make that six. And then you've got this 3.2 corresponds with that 1.6. Okay, so if I say 3.2 over 1.6, I bet that's going to give me 2, but let's make sure. 3.2 divided by 1.6, oh goodness, divided by 1.6. I'm going to try this one more time. Third time's a charm. I keep pushing the wrong buttons. There we go, it did equal 2. I should have just went with my thought and been done with it. Okay, so that is, let me write this on here so y'all know where I got those numbers. Okay, then if I take AB over QB, that's going to be 6 over 3, which is also 2. So those two sides correspond. So I can come up here and I can say circle, circle, I'm going to write my square down here. Square, square. That means those two sides correspond. And if you look, these angles are congruent. Angle A is congruent to Q. So there you go. Remember how I did it a while ago? I said I got my sides correspond. My angle is congruent. Corresponds with my other set of sides. So that gave me side, angle, side. But like I said, it really does help if you take the triangles apart. It just makes it a lot more clear what you need to do. And I've already, I've already done all this for you. Explain which sides or angles support your answer. And I did the math on this one, that those proportions, both they both equaled two, so that makes it work. And see, I'm doing the math here. And angle A and angle Q are corresponding and are congruent. And then for C, I just write the similarity statement. I did not do this one yet. Uh, the triangle CAB is similar to triangle SQB. So when they ask you to write a statement, that's how you're going to write it. And don't forget your little tilde sign right here, okay? That's what tells us they're similar. Okay, just to summarize this lesson, you can use the side, 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 and side, angle, side, triangle similarity theorems to prove that two triangles are similar to each other. And you need to read through your LMS lesson 3.08 and complete the student guide. Also read through the reference guide. Complete these problems in your problem set. It's very important that you do that because it's practice, practice, practice. Use the key to see if you're right. If there's anything in there you didn't understand, please contact me or attend TOGA before you complete the mid-unit test. You definitely want a good grade on the mid-unit test and you don't want to have to do corrections. So please make sure you understand the material. And that will be it for Lesson 3.08 and thank you for listening.